Kristen here, Life Coach for Teens. I am going to go out on a limb here and share my belief with you that I would say at least 75% of girls who struggle with either anxiety and or depression um, don't struggle because of a chemical imbalance, 75% of the time, or hard life circumstances. They struggle because of how they interpret those things. I would say that 75% of girls who struggle with social anxiety struggle because of negative thought patterns. And this is a huge statement because it means that you probably don't need years of counseling and therapy and medication to fix this problem. What you need is someone who's trained to understand the core root of the negative beliefs and how to break them apart and help girls build a stronger, more positive um, belief system, if you will. And the reason this is true, um, the reason our thoughts matter so much more than we give them credit for, is a, a simple, I wish I had a, a whiteboard or something I could draw this for you guys, but our thoughts lead us to feel a certain way, and those feelings either lead us closer to our goals or farther away from our goals. Here's an example I use for girls. Say that you're in class and um, you want to raise your hand and participate in class because you know that's something your teachers are looking for and it's important for you to um, impress your teachers. But if the first thought that goes through your mind is, what if this is wrong? What if I'm not good enough or smart enough? That's going to lead a girl to feeling insecure, um, sad, uh, confused. And those feelings have an actual energy about them that is very heavy and low. And when an anxious girl is feeling heavy and low and sad and depressed about not knowing if she knows the right answer, is she very likely to raise her hand and put herself out there and potentially be wrong? No, she's going to self-protect and stay safe and play small. So these things, meaning her thoughts, led her to feel bad and then play safe and stay small they're never gonna get her to the point where she's raising her hand and actively participating in class. And the same thing can be true for friendships. If you have this thought that you're not funny or people don't like you, that is gonna make you feel really sad. And sad is a heavy, heavy energy and a heavy feeling. And when you're feeling sad and bad, you're not likely to pick up your lunch tray or your lunch bag and go sit down next to a new group of people and engage in conversation. That heavy feeling of sad and bad is going to speak to her primitive brain and say, stay safe, don't talk to anybody. <laughs> hunker down and eat your lunch or go to the bathroom and eat your lunch. So her thought of I'm not smart enough or people don't like me, those thoughts are keeping her from achieving her goals. Are you with me? I hope that makes sense. Um, let me think of another example. If there's a group of girls in the hall and ideally your daughter wants to join those girls, be friends with those girls, be able to laugh and have a good time with those girls. Say she, your daughter, is walking down the hall and she sees the girls, but her first thought is, what if they don't want me to talk to them? That thought is going to leave her feeling bad. And when she feels bad, she's not likely to go up and say, hey guys, what's going on? Or what are you laughing about? She's going to protect and avoid the situation that she ultimately wanted to be a part of. You see, I'm trying to think of other situations on the fly, but I'm, I wanna go back to my previous statement and say that girls don't necessarily need years of therapy and counseling. They need to go down to those root beliefs and those root problems and the negative thoughts and start there. That's why coaching is such an awesome way to counteract social anxiety because there are proven paths that work that don't take a ton of time and don't involve medication that I firmly believe in and I've been using in my own private practice for over a decade. So if your daughter has a set of goals, whether they're social goals with friends, um, I just promise you she'll never meet those goals unless she can go back and work on the thoughts that pop into her head when she's faced with a social situation. So the thoughts lead to her feeling a certain way and will either lead to her going after her goals or avoiding and staying safe and not 
going for her goals. Um, every girl, uh, they, like this description, we all have an inner mean girl on one shoulder and an inner cheerleader on the other. Girls with social anxiety have almost literally drowned out the inner cheerleader and they're fully focused and listening very closely to their inner mean girl. It's almost as if they had a gray colored pair of goggles on. So they walk through their day, their halls, they come home looking for proof as why they're not enough and why they're a failure and why nobody likes them. So these goggles or this inner mean girl um, speaks loudly to the point where that it's the only voice your daughter hears. So if you've ever noticed that no matter how much you try to build your daughter up or say nice things or remind her of how wonderful and fabulous you think she is she is only focused on listening to that inner mean girl or those negative beliefs and the only way to get through that is with some very specific training so I just wanted to come and show that thoughts matter more I mean I think sports analogies work really well for this um, a lot of sports coach will say that the mental game is 80% of the game so how you prepare for your sport is 80% in your head and then 20% is your technique so if we can help your daughter let go of that inner mean girl and train and work on the mindset necessary to go after her goals she only needs to know 20% of how to make a friend it's more just getting in her head and helping her uh, figure out how to realize that those negative old thought patterns are no longer serving her so it's time to ditch them and build up a new set of beliefs or trade those gray colored glasses for a rose colored pair so that she can start going through her day looking for proof as to why she is enough. She's smart enough, good enough, funny enough, people like her. That is such a, it's a more pleasant way to live life. And that mindset piece is everything when it comes to social anxiety. So I'm a big fan of coaching. Obviously, I'm a coach. I chose to become a coach because I feel for teenagers, the coaching model works a heck of a lot better and a heck of a lot faster than the counseling model. I've, if you go through some of my videos, I've talked about this before, but it's much more powerful for a teenage girl to have someone walking along beside them saying, here, try these tips or these techniques that work. And then she has the um, empowering feeling of trying those in her life and seeing that she does actually have the ability to make a huge difference in how she goes about her day. It's pretty awesome. So thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, meaning that negative thoughts can and will hold your daughter back until she figures out a way to um, replace them with a, a much more positive, empowering set of beliefs. This stuff really, really matters. So thanks for taking a second to listen to me. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday afternoon wherever you are in the world. And please feel free as usual to message me. I'll set a link to some call times that you can set up for this week. I, am, I just added two Sunday call times. So if you know that your daughter has negative thoughts that are holding her back, jump on one of those two calls for tomorrow. I'm working in the afternoon trying to catch up after my month long break with pneumonia. So I'll be here on Sunday. I'm looking forward to talking to a couple of you from this group. Take care. Talk soon. Bye.